fix the recording. All right, whoever would like to go on questions, I am good to go. Well, my my question is more of just an open ended. What's going wrong with my code? <laughs> That's fine. Go ahead, share the screen. Let's take a look. All right. Uh... So here's app.js uh, and so it it's start I, I don't know what to show you first um, I I do have a use effect that's telling me whenever store ID gets changed okay because when I, when I uh, launch it the um, there we are. Yeah. So the 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 root path opens up launch, which does a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, it, as you can see by the function name, it gets the stores, checks if you're logged in, and gets current store. And so right here, um, it. Uh, what am I trying to say here? So I I get I get log I get that I'm logged in and then I tell it to set store ID. So in here it shows me that store ID is an actual number. Okay. And then I tell it set store ID, which should set it to one. Um, but then it turns back to negative one, which is what I set it to initially in app.js. So it's like right here, I'm console logging out that data.storeID is one. And I say, okay, store ID should be one, but then I show the actual store ID and it's negative one. Okay. Um, and then it does one, and then interestingly enough, it says it should be one, and it prints out what it is. Right. That that's that that's the comment I put in right here. What's interesting to me is that it doesn't end up with the right code. So it would be one thing if it were happening multiple times and ending up in the right spot. But what's interesting is set store ID, set store. Um, Let me see your app.js for how you initialize the state. Okay, all of that looks fine. And and this doesn't do anything except trace for me when it gets changed. Okay, go back to your console log screen, go back to your browser. So if we if we load it, Um, all right, let me request remote control here and take a look. Okay. So uh, launch JS does a navigate to home with that reload that app, uh, app component. But even doing that shouldn't reset the um, state to negative one. Uh, uh, but try it from the. 
Okay, so this isn't our problem. I was curious if the navigate in the dependencies array was causing problems. Okay. And it doesn't appear that it is. So as a side question, does does the use effect get called again when navigate is used inside of the use effect? Because we have the navigate set down down at the bottom. I would think it would only rerun when if you were navigating to the same page again, it may unmount and remount the component if this were taking you back to the launch page. Okay. So let's well, let's try this theory. Let's take out the oops, take out the navigates temporarily. And you're still getting a bunch of, let's just try this. Okay, so it's definitely this function that's causing multiple re-renders. Okay. Right, because if you disable the call of that function, yeah, yeah, we don't run into any problems here. All right. Um, well, like I said, I know this this could be a, a bit of a rabbit hole, but just even with that insight, I'm, I'm that gives me something to pursue. So the. What I'm confused about is this should only be running once or when navigate is called. And what I'm confused about is why setting stores is causing this use effect to rerun. Uh, um, oh, so that brings me to a question because set stores, Is passed in via a prop, but because that isn't in the dependencies array, I'm not sure why it would be triggering a reload. Oh, but if what, uh, so when you change a state, does it reload? A, com a component that uses that state like for something in its return function. Like if it uses that, if it displays, just say the value of that state, if you change the state, does it reload the component? It does, but as far as I know with use effect, it shouldn't be redoing the use effect. Right. That was getting me to my other question. So when a component gets reloaded, it reruns the return, but not okay. necessarily the use effect. And the set states, they just get set once and the uh, the use effect and the states, those should all get anything above the return should just get run once. Is that correct? Well, uh, by default. No, the if you had a function in here, it would get run again, but because you're not calling the function, it doesn't matter if it gets run again. Okay. If that makes sense at all. I um, think it does, yes. So the whole component gets rerun, but if you've got a function, it doesn't rerun. And and use effect, unless it's dependent on a, a state or something, it only gets run the first time the component loads? It's supposed to, if the dependencies are not, if the dependencies have not changed, it is only supposed to run once. So it makes sense that this gets run multiple times because when the state changes, this would rerun. But hooks should not be rerunning. That's the whole point of a hook. So I'm wondering if the router is doing something, maintaining some internal state in here that's causing the problem. 
Um, but I would have to dig into this code outside of office hours in order to truly get you an answer. Okay, um, I, I I can save it for one on ones and and see what I can if if I can figure out anything in the meantime. Yeah, let me let me put this back to the way I had it. I just don't want to leave you in a broken state. Um, a broken earth state. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't, uh, th that was not an intended pun, but a uh, very apt one. Um, I'm not sure what's causing that to go wrong. Okay, well, I I can uh, save it for for one-on-one. -on -one. Um, well, now you've got a connection refused, which is interesting. Store IDs not defined on your back end. Um, so that must be when it was getting called somewhere on the front end, it wasn't supplying. Oh, because it's passing in the negative one as a parameter when it's making a call. Mm. And negative one is not a valid store ID. Yep. Yeah, um, if you want to, if you want to send me this code, Doug, I'm going to, I'll take a look. I know I, I owe Larry a review of his code as well. Um, so if you want to send me this as a zip file, just delete your node modules folder before you send it to me, just so it's, it's not a giant zip. Um, okay. If you want to send me that, I can take a look and let you know. Thank you. I will, Max. I don't see anything jumping out. Normally it would be something in your dependencies array is causing it to run more frequently than you anticipated. Um, but I don't see anything immediately wrong with that code. So I can't give you a quick answer like I normally can. All right. I appreciate that. I, I'll zip it up and send it to you. Perfect. Thank, thanks. thanks for looking. Zach, do you want to go next? Sure. Um... So I was working on this a lot yesterday. Um, I didn't really end up finishing, um, but I've got like a few issues. Um, so I created like a username and password, or at least I tried to, um, and I don't think it's getting loaded into the, um, um, What's it called? Uh, Beekeeper. Uh, I tried adding it, but it keeps telling me like created at doesn't exist. And then when I remove it and try to run the command again, it tells me it can't process it because it doesn't have created at. Okay. So what you're doing here, the problem is um, you're telling it hey, I'm going to pass you one, two, three, four, and five values, but mm -hmm. all you're passing it is one, two, and three values. So in order to set this created at and this updated at, you need to pass it a value in this set of the parentheses. So in order to do that, what you end up doing is you just say comma now, and these parentheses tell it, hey, I don't actually want the words now to show in there. I want the word, I want the value, like I want the current timestamp in there. And then same for here. So now if you highlight this and hit run selection, you get that. Okay. Oh, hold on. There we go. Okay, sorry. Um, so now the problem is SQLize created created at with a capital letter in it, and that's causing problems. So I'm not going to get this right because I can never remember which the right one is. But it takes you because it's got the capital letter in it. You have to put it in either quotes, backticks, or single quotes. I think it's single quotes. Um, it's. No. Oh, yeah. It's double quotes for column names, and I can never remember which one it is. Okay. Um, maybe. 
Ah, nice. okay. One row affected. So now cool. if we go to users and refresh down here, now your nice. user is finally in here. The problem is the password here is not encrypted. It's not running through bcrypt. So depending mm -hmm. on how your login method works, if your login method is checking and using the bcrypt.compare feature, this is going to try and compare it to a hash and the hash isn't going to be correct. Mm -hmm. So that's just one thing to warn you against. The better way of doing it is in your code, in your backend code, doing a check to see if any, um, any users already exist. And if any users don't exist, then insert, go create a new user using the bcrypt function, which is what we do in our blog at the very bottom of server.js. So in the back end, not in the front end. Yeah, so that create first user, the watcher, bcrypt. So this all should be working right here. Um, but it doesn't okay. appear to be. So let's see what's causing um, the crash. Cannot um, find module connect se session SQLize. That just means you haven't NPM installed this. Yeah, I tried doing that. I think further up, if you look at it, I did input that command. I think I just there's like a few packages I didn't install. I like I said, I tried installing them, but I don't know. Like okay. which ones I missed. Okay, well, let's just give it a try now. Um, yeah, see. Um, uh, you just got the name a little wrong there. It's connect session sequelize, and that's what you want, not express session sequelize. Oh, that must be why. Okay. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm out of that, but yeah, my connect session sequelize. That's probably what I was missing. Okay, and now you've got session is not defined. So scroll up in your code. Um, and that should be sessions, plural. Okay. Because it's matching the session that you create, the sessions that you create on line nine. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now that fixed all of it, the problem is, oh, you don't even need to do that because it restarted when you changed the file. Um, so the problem is, is if you go down to the bottom where we create the new user, it says only create it if the user's length is zero, but because we ran that SQL insert command, the user's isn't actually zero right now. So what we actually need to do is go back to Beekeeper and delete out the user that we actually just created right there. So if you just right click on uh, on that row and delete row and then apply down in the bottom, now go back to your uh, server, control C to stop it and then up enter to restart it. Okay, now that created. And so if we refresh in the bottom right or do that, that works too. Nice. There's your password with the, the encryption. So if you sign in, that should uh, 3001 you want to be on. Yeah, I was having this problem before. Um, do this. Uh, what? Command, do I input again to see like what ports I'm running on? Unfortunately, there isn't one, believe it or not. Um, well, I have to open the program. The oh, search act it, right? activity monitor will let you kill other node processes. Stupid thing. Oh, there, I'm sorry, uh, I bumped your screen share yeah. by accident. Oh, uh, that works. Let me stay. Activity monitor. Activity monitor. And then if you do a search for node in the top right, it should come up with a couple processes. And then you can just select each one of them and kill it. And then in your terminal, you should just have to restart it. 
Oh, here it is. Um, Did you say I just search node? Yeah. Nothing's coming up. You want to start your screen share again? Sometimes yeah. it's it's really good practice to stop your node um, instances before you close out VS Code, or whenever you're switching projects before you switch projects, change the make sure it's stopped because when you're going between multiple ones, the ports definitely fight each other. Yeah, I think I might have forgotten to do that before I started it. And then I closed out of everything. And I guess it was still running. All right, go. Uh, oh, change the tab to CPU from energy. I don't think, no, that's still not finding anything. Okay, go back to your, oh, oh there you go. okay. <laughs> I guess there were a lot of them. Should I just? Close yep. all of them. Yep. Uh, the little um, X in the top, kind of in the toolbar. Yeah. And then just quit. Okay. Now go back to your VS Code and up enter on that because you want to restart your back end before you start your front end. Okay. Okay. Good sign there. Okay, hit N on that. It says that your home screen backend is actually on 3000. So go to your backend code and go to your server listen. There's your problem. On scroll down a little bit, you're telling your backend server to take 3000 and it should be 3001. Okay. So, yep. Yeah, and then up enter on that. Uh... Now that your back end isn't hogging 3001, this should work. Okay, now the problem is your, I think your front end is, is hitting 3000 instead of 3001. So go to your front end code and go to the API URL file uh, up at the top, first one, and change that to 3001. And that's really the benefit of having it in that external file is we can change it in one place and it should fix it everywhere. Right. Okay, it still looks like it's going to 3000. So let's go to your login JS 16. Yeah, this might be something that's through my whole code, unfortunately. Um, I don't see anything immediately wrong. Let me get remote control again and let's take a look. So I don't love that this doesn't have a file extension on it. This should really say API URL.js. Oh, sorry. I, I did that with browse too. I don't know if that's like actually causing the problem. Um, but we can try it. I'm just gonna, um, am I going in the wrong direction? Where's your backend code? Here we go. I'm just gonna copy the file so, or the password so I can test. Good call. <laughs> okay, well now we've got a bunch of different errors. So you made it to browse. Uh, I haven't finished setting that page up yet. But, okay. Um, that page has a million errors. I'm not really sure why, because I haven't really done anything on it yet. It very well could be that you're just missing the file extension. Um, or it could just be this lingering slash. I was trying to input a search bar, but I didn't get to looking at that. So I just commented it all out. I just had the div ID as like a div ID body as like a placeholder just to try and like make the screen the right colors. Okay, now the only problem is this input is missing a closing tag. And you're back to normal. Sweet, thank you.
Anything else? Um, no, I think that does it for me. That um, definitely gets me past a few roadblocks. Thank you very much. Cool. Everyone else follow along with that? Couple port issues in there, killing instances, making sure your inputs have closing tags, and then making sure your file names all end in .js. Hopefully a good reminder that uh, if you're running into problems, chances are other people are running into problems as well. So that's what these office hours are all about. Anyone else have questions? Hold on, let me switch. Let me switch to the conference mic so that people can hear you, Christy. Well, you're muted there, but you unmuting there, I think is gonna cause weird echo problems. So I'm just gonna put the conference mic in and switch to that. Uh, now I'm waiting for my own. But I was trying to do the um, browser router, the React, uh, reactor DOM, and switch wasn't working. OK, go ahead and share your screen. Let's take a look. All right. Can you guys still hear all right remotely? I only got one desktop. OK. Cool. Thanks, Zach. Close this. Oh, God. Nicole, in college, I attended um, hackathons, which is actually how Hack Up State got started. Um, and I um, I went to, I don't know, probably 20 of them in college. Um, but a bunch of um, employers sponsor them uh, and try and recruit from there. And so Namecheap was one of the companies that sponsored one of the hackathons that I attended. Um, and so... I don't know, a good quarter of my t-shirts all came from hackathons because uh, in college I was like flying uh, somewhere else in the country about once a month and attending these hackathons. So that's how I, I have my t-shirt collection is just attending a bunch of different ones. Okay, so Christy. Maybe somebody, maybe somebody can take a turn and because see how it's saying starting the development? Yeah, click in your terminal and hit control C. Sometimes it just gets hung up. So control C should stop it and then hit up enter to restart it. Oh, that ain't good. But if, why? Because I unhooked. If I was if I would have stayed home, I would have been fine. <laughs> Unhooking all this stuff and trying to set it up again is killing me. All right, let me remote control, even though okay. Or a full five feet from me. Okay. Um, so let's start at the top and work our way down. Index.js is the highest, and we don't really have any problems in there. Then we go into it, app.js. That's, I think, mm, yeah, this is where it is. Okay. Oh. So here's the problem you're using a, you're trying to use a route but you're missing browser router and you're also missing this layout being in the element. So if we actually take these out, uh, is that why switch is not working? Well, switch isn't actually part of react router six. It's part of react router five. I said that I was, cause I was working with Mel. And he said to do six 
something sick. And I said, so, I said that's not right. Something's not right with that. And I kept telling him because we, we did it we like. We only use six in class. We aren't using five at all. So you shouldn't have a switch anywhere. Well, I told him that that happened. I said, I don't think we, because he had me do reactor dump you know reactor dash dom and in, in, in he had me do something like 6.3 i was like i don't think that's right i don't think we're supposed to do that and so and then switch wouldn't work so so yeah so we're gonna just nuke out react router because you're only supposed to install react router doms and we're and not that 6.3.0 well, that could be the latest one, as long as it's, I'm just going to uninstall both of them to play it safe. Okay. And then I'm going to reinstall. And if you don't specify a version, um, it should install the latest one for you. Right. Which it did. So you're on 630. This is right. So then there should, so switch, does we don't, I don't need switch? You don't need switch. You just need router, route, and routes. Um, oh. I thought that, and I tried to pull up my back end. I mean, my well, I was I might have been pulling up the wrong thing. I tried to pull up what we did to show him, but I it wasn't working. Okay, but even taking that out isn't enough to get this started. Mm -hmm. So something screwed up somewhere at a pretty high level if your server isn't starting. Well, we, he thought it was a switch because it was working and I had, you know, I had my page up and I mean the local host and then it just, it stopped. I could only see the background color. And he, and he said, that's a max question. So I was like, well, let me get dressed. <laughs> uh, can I make it a male question? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, Everything was working and then we thought it was the switch. Because it kept giving the error message of switch, but but because it's not coming up, we can't. I can't. I can't show you what the message was saying. Well, but it's not like not even starting. So like it would be one thing if it was like cannot find switch, and we could easily say, oh, that's a. Well, that's what it. That's what the. Okay, so it was working, and then it was the switch was the issue. So we there was some stuff that he had me do, like you know, comment it out. So maybe I didn't uncomment out all the stuff, uh, maybe. Yeah, but I'm looking. What if we just like take it all the way back to super basics? Oh, taking reactor, the router, the router dot, the react dom out, maybe. Because everything was working until we started fooling with reactor dot. Reactor down. Um, you broke I, it real good. I know. That's what I'm saying. We were doing, I was doing so good. I had everything and I was understanding. And now this. GitHub. Oh, putting the stuff in Git. Yeah, so, what? so when. Make it commit something and then if you make changes and it breaks you can go back to the stuff oh to that level right but it, i think i'm wondering if we could take react is it because you have app completely commented out uh it's not mounting i don't know it was working at home I, can we take the reactor react the well so many i imported so much stuff with it so i don't know um If somebody else, maybe it is so it's not a time issue, it's just that it's not slow. It's, it's something else. No, it's, it's something's going wrong. Let me let me go open up um, one of our code, one of our things. Let me see if you made any edits to index that you shouldn't have. Now, see, all of that's imported right. Only thing I put in index was um, boot, bootstrap and uh. All right, well, I don't see any problems in here. I think everything is in layout and there's three, it's, well, right, it's that, because 
it was the reactor router down. Ever since that got added, that's where things started going. Right, but see, we've got to comment it out here. So even that shouldn't be causing the problem. And then. Um, to call now. <laughs> Um, starting the development server hang. Um, do me a, a favor, Christy, just reboot your whole computer for me. Okay. Um, and then when you get rebooted, just share your screen again and let's take a look. Okay. When when you have like starting the development server is hanging, there's something wrong at such a high level that like this isn't a this normally isn't a problem with your code anymore. It's a problem with like the whole project or how the project is booting. And I'm thinking that's causing the problem. Um, but let's give it a reboot and see if that fixes it. Okay. BRB. <laughs> Any other questions from people? Oh, wait. Let me try it again. Uh, yeah, I got one. Uh, sure. Go for it, Larry. My, uh, I'll go back. That's how many tabs open. It's crazy. Uh, I bought a new monitor and everything. Now, not, nothing is working. The monitor's not working. The code's not working. That 15 inch monitor? Yeah. I might have to have one of those. I'm traveling. It was $150. So it was $50 off. Okay, I'm trying to get 150 this. total or 150 and then 50 off? Total. Larry has one too. He got a deal too. Okay. See, I've got my little like 10 inch iPad, but it feels so doinky that I want to. I paid, uh, I think I paid like two or some change for like the protection. Um, that's not what I want. You wanted. guys are not a good influence on me. That's not what I want. Right. This was the top one, too. I did the best. I did the best one. Can you send me a link of which one you got? Thanks. And where did my thing go? Yeah, link for the boot up. All right. So for some reason, Oh goodness! Here, command option I. Man, let me refresh the page. I'm not. Oh, now it wants to make me a liar. Okay, well. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't getting mm -hmm. the stuff in the network thing. <laughs> I'm good. Um. So oftentimes that happens, and I know it's not happening right now, but if there two search bars up at the top and those filter everything down so often if you like accidentally type a letter into one of them it will filter to the point where you can't see the calls that are actually happening um so that's probably what what ended up happening there okay thank you this filter on all right thank you christy You're welcome. Okay, let's see. When you sent me, I forgot the code. I was like, but you can still show up. Like, if you mess the code, it, like, you don't, how, what do you mean? Did you delete the code from your computer? Like, what do you mean you forgot it? No, it's and standing I'm, downstairs. Oh, oh the door code. I'm like, oh, God. Christy texted me, I forgot the code. And I was like, okay, like, download it from the internet. Or like, what do you mean? <laughs> like, your JavaScript? And then I went, oh, the door code. Yeah, I was trying to I was trying to find it. Mm -hmm. I thought I had it somewhere, but I was like I think I do got a question. All right. Okay. I'll come back So category. History restored. Oh, this is not the same thing. Let me get my mic. Never mind. <laughs> Chrissy, whenever you're back up, she's joining Zoom. My lo so, so my local host is doing what it was doing before I left home. So let me see. Let me go back in the Zoom. It's too much. 
I was making good progress. I don't appreciate this laptop doing this to me. Unmute the speaker, share screen. I only have one screen. All right. All right, take me to your VS code. And then uh, let me request. Oh, OK, so you're back online. So the reboot did fix the, the server not starting, right? Right. Now it's just a white screen, though, because we commented out all of your router stuff. So now the trick is that we can put all of this in. Mm -hmm. But when we put it in, we're going to put in the, e, the the router 6 version of it. Okay. So we're going to say router root and routes. I asked, too, about that. I was I, I asked about this. I was like, is it supposed to be in an order? Well, what? What Mel probably was doing was referencing his own code from Buzz. cohort two, and in cohort two we taught five because five was the latest version. And that's what he was. That's what he was because the that's the reason why he was. I reached out to him was because he told me that his project was what I wanted to do was very similar. So if you install version five, this wouldn't cause you any problem. But because you installed version six. six, it caused issues. So if we convert this code mm. to the six version, which looks more like this, mm -hmm. now and we comment your layout back in, you okay, so now you've got a problem in layout 14. That's what I was seeing before I left home about the switch. Okay, so you've got a similar problem here, except so you're doing your your routing in your layout. So yeah. and, and so oh wait, if in, in layout, I think it's layout.js, everything was in a what is it, an object? If you scroll up, he, these were all in objects and we took them out of, see the switch, see switch is still up there. Okay, do the, you want a layout file? Yes, because of the way he explained it to me, I think yes, but if that's not good. No, no I, I don't have anything against the layout file. What I'm trying to figure out is you do all of your routing in your layout, which is not wrong, but then you have your router up at the app level. And so I don't know that you need a router at your app level if you're going to be doing all of your routing work in the layout. So, so what I would suggest is just put your layout in your app for now. So in what, in the app.js? Yeah. So then I don't need to. And then in your layout, that's where you should do all of your routing work. So we're I gonna, think that was the goal. That's why we put this, all of this here. That's okay. why he, how he explained it. So like homepage, lifestyle page, uh, should all of that be in squiggly? Um, well, no, this is, we just have to update this to six as well. Oh. So this becomes routes, this becomes routes. And then anytime you have a element, it goes here. Oh, okay, okay. And that's the six version way of doing so it. So that might be what it was, was we were on the five in, in. Well, you installed six, but you were using five. five right. Okay. I, I, Cause I have to tell, I, I would told him, I would let him know. Cause we did, we did that with the, um, uh, whatever page it was, we did like the, the semicolon slash semicolon so that we would so that it would be telling it that it was going to be routing. Because the main thing that I was telling him is that I need to put my stuff in the database so that I could bring it from the database. I won't put everything in the database and then pull it from the database so that it would be full stack. That was the. Well, and this should bring you to. Here we go. So you're good to go. Okay. And so now <laughs> something crazier. 
So let's see, where is it? Uh, I, how do I get to beekeeper? I know my postcard is running. Where, where would, where is? Should be in the applications folder, or if you hit command space, you can just type in beekeeper and it should open. All right, I'm gonna do command space. So I think, I got something else that I broke, but I think that I was trying to create a new database, but I think that I created a new database. I think I changed something in Okay, so blog. start by connecting to the default database. So just double click on your saved over there. This? No, deep, where it says, oh, that, that either one. Yeah, okay. So now, if you click on your little drop down on the left hand side, those are all of your databases. So, can you check my blog to see if I messed it up or if you I just made an untitled table somehow? Right. And so, how do I get? I want to get rid of that. So, uh, just click on the little plus icon uh, up here to create a new tab for a script, mm -hmm. and then drop table. All right, let's play this game again. Let's try double quotes. Is it that? I, I don't actually know which ones it is. And then inside the double quotes, do untitled underscore table. And then run in the bottom right. <laughs> so I was trying to create. Oh, we got it right the first time. So I was trying to, I kept putting create database favorite, and then I kept hitting save, and then it kept taking me to save query. And I put, a, I don't know why I wasn't hitting run. And so for the longest, I just kept doing the same thing. And I was, I was getting so frustrated. Yeah, save query is only for like, if you wanted to save drop table so that you could run it in the future. Right. But in my mind, I was thinking create. I don't know why. You were thinking save before run because that's how it works in your code. So now I have. Now you don't have any tables in your favorites. Right. But did I, so I created the database. I just don't have any tables in the database. Correct. So once oh. you go to see, once you get to your backend code and you start creating your models, as right. soon as DB sync runs, it's going to create the tables based off of the models. Gotcha. So that, so I, so I have a, so I have the database. That's what I needed before I started doing back end stuff. And Correct. Then, okay, so now my next question is um so I did a like a product product card. So there was only one product card on the W3 and uh Mel told me to go to something called Dribble, but I didn't see anything in Dribble. I have no idea what dribble is, so I cannot dribble on it. Okay. Well, okay, so then let me show you. Do, 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 do. Uh, wait. I was on W3 score. And so I want to use. Oh, they got a template. Let me see. Go down two more. Is that what you uh, wanted? Well, well, how, maybe like a free one or a sample. Like, how, who else? Where else would I find? So, I mean, I would. I would, oh, here's this one says free. So I would lean into Bootstrap first. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Because Bootstrap has it's not a product card, but it's a generic card. And if you want to hijack that design, that's going to be your best way forward. Because when you start using other people's CSS, it starts conflicting with Bootstrap CSS or your own CSS, and, I and you run into problems. And I have Bootstrap on there. But before you start here, be very careful. You're about to fall into the same trap that you fell into with React Router. This is Bootstrap version 4.3. Oh. So click that little drop down in the top right where I just, yep. And switch it. See, they don't. This is this is so far behind. They don't even have the newest version of Bootstrap here. We're in Bootstrap, I think five, if not six. 
So just delete everything out of the URL here and go back to get bootstrap. And this is really a problem of, of Google linking to an old version of bootstrap. So just hit enter there because that's the newest version, if not somewhat new. And now if you do a search for cards over here and take that top one, you're going to get and scroll down. You're going to get a bunch of examples of cards. And okay. cards are what we use in the blog to make, you know, things show up and look a little bit more style. So if you just scroll down in the main section there, they should have some examples. Why is it not, it's not letting me? What am I doing? Oh, oh this, this what else? There you go. Enter. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, this is what I want. All right, okay, all right. That that's okay. <sighs> so tell me what you did because I have to tell Mel. So we we updated the syntax. We from... rebooted the computer to start, which was why your development server wasn't starting. I have okay. no idea why, but the reboot fixed that. Okay. What we did is we changed the syntax in both app.js and layout.js to not use switch, which is an ES5 component or a, a React Router 5 component and upgrade the syntax. Okay. Um, syntax. Okay. Okay, I'll, I'll be able to tell him that. And so I wanted to, and then I have another question. <laughs> So I told him he was helping me. I was like, okay, Mel, I need you to send me some verbiage to go along with this. I just want to understand a little bit better, which I think I do, but I was going to talk, I want you to like talk you through it. Right. So okay, so I have a I have a homepage um dot js, but I then I have a header and putter dot js and dot css. So so and you, have, you want those to show up on every page? Well, they're going to. The header and the footer will. So that's the benefit of layout.js is that you could put it on just the layout file and not need to put it in your home page and it would still work. So that's what he said. That those are his words. So so I have home page on the food page, the fashion page, the lifestyle page, and the travel page. And that's what he said, that the layout was going to make it so that it showed, so that it would bring, so the the homepage is a combination of header, homepage, footer. And so then he said that bringing the homepage onto the layout page is going to, for every, for all of the different pages, is going to show header, footer, you know, header, footer, homepage information, and well, that, 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 right. So now, what you're saying is that the header is on every page, the footer mm -hmm. is on every page, and then based off of whatever the path is, that's what's going to control what is below the header and above the footer. Right, and then I need to create some buttons so that. From the, let me see, let me go to this. Oh, this, I need, I need my other monitor. I'm going to die like this. Let's see. Oh, what? Refresh. So now you probably have an error in your console. So if you go look in yes. here, now you've got errors. And if you scroll up, it's going to tell you. Mm. Router. It's well. Router. A. Okay, so I I think Mel unintentionally did more harm than help here because use href. I'm pretty sure is a React Router five function. So I think that that's going to cause you problems. The other thing that is going to cause you problems is. You can't use the link tag outside of browser router. So I can't use the wait. So on so on layout, you mean? I mean, yeah. So the home, uh, what is it on the home page? 
The problem is you can't use a link outside of browser router. So if but the your header, header has a link in, in it, it's going to cause problems. But I'm pretty sure if we. Oh, yeah, because that's the. So then you mean this, where it is like the nav bar? It's this link. So this link can't work because the header itself is outside of the app. I'm sorry, it's outside of the browser router. So really we should set this up the way we set up the blog. Not even the blog. We gotta go back to um the message. I don't even think we did in messages. What was the thing we did routing for the first time? Was it the it was the billing app. Billing. Yeah, we did like an invoices and we did routing for the first time. Um and we did the Doug, tell me I'm not crazy because we did that in a one on one. You had questions about it. What was that project? Was was that um, I think I think it was the um, the blog. Mm -hmm. So we did a billing one, like we had to. Was that hold on? We I'm sorry. We looked at like billing from San Francisco and like five different places or something. Okay, oh, the invoices. On. Invoices. That was it. Okay, here. Let me. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Can't imagine why we're confused. It's not like we do a lot of projects in 24 weeks or anything. Uh, that was sarcastic. Is there, is there like a, um, because he sent me something with Reactor. Okay, we use Outlet. Outlet is what we're supposed to be using, which is a, another React Router 6 thing that didn't really exist in React Router 5. So what we do, okay, here, I, I, I pulled up the, uh, okay, now I'm fighting with only having one monitor. But um, okay. where did okay? You're over here. I my code is here. So this is we're gonna we're gonna jumpstart your code, Christy. We're gonna take your whole browser router mm -hmm. and move it to app. App.js. App.js. And you're going to see why in a second. Yeah, he, he that was, yeah, because I had a bunch of stuff in app.js and he told me to move it to layout. Uh, so, well, that would have been your computer refuses to open the app.js for me. What the heck? <laughs> no. There we go. All right. So, we're going to take all of this and we're going to paste in all the router, router router stuff. Okay. Then what we're going to do is say for all of these routes, mm -hmm. they're all going to be contained in a route with the element layout. Mm -hmm. And then within that element layout, all of these other routes exist inside of it. Mm -hmm. And then we've got to take all the imports from over here and move those over. Now, the all those imports we took out, so we took them out of we took the object off. Would we should they be, should that be put back? No, well, you only use the curly braces if you're not using the default export. So if these have the word default in them, you don't need the curly braces. Okay. You mean in on the page? On the page. So yeah, I do have the I have default export on all of them. 
Uh -oh. Okay. Faders. And I'm guessing these all have one now. Nope. Mm -hmm. Why is it mad with me? Oh, is it one and then components? Oh. Yeah, that part was confusing me when he had me create the folder components. Um, oh, so all of them should have components instead of dot dot. Yeah, so because yeah. we because we because we moved it to app dot js. Correct. So okay. app js is up here, and we've got to say, well, in order to get to travel page, you've got to go oh, into the components. components. Into okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Now the last thing we're gonna do, we just said, hey. All of these things are going to show up within the layout file. Mm -hmm. So in the layout file, what we need to do is say, hey, not only is the header and footer going to show up, anything that's going to show up in here, the router is putting in this thing called outlet. Mm -hmm. And that outlet is what's going to show up any of the routes in here because we put it inside this layout route here. Okay. So now when we come over here and refresh, we're not only going to get your app.js, we're also going to get your header. So this um, earlier, something I did, I had it duplicated and then we fixed, we fixed it. <laughs> now it's broke again. So that should be as simple as, well, if we look at your layout, and we look at your header, your header maybe it's not your well where is that coming from? Oh, I bet your home page has it too. It's has your page. header in it. Yeah. So you don't need your footer as part of your home page anymore because cool. it's gonna show up on every page based off of the layout. And so I don't need the header either then. Correct. Oh, so these two did. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And now you only have it once because your header is set up on your layout. I understand now, but I don't understand when I'm alone. So now you've got your header and your footlet. And you're, when you're like, what the heck is my outlet? The outlet is what React Router is giving you from app.js because whatever shows up in in this route mm -hmm. is your out is what's going to show up in the app. So if if I'm going back to app.js, do I need layout? Yes, because you can't just stick your header in here. Okay. Or in here. Okay. Right. The router is like, give me routes. I just want to know what I'm supposed to show up. So browser router is the outlet. Browser router provides the outlet, which is going to let the things inside of this route show up. Okay, so so associate browser router route and route with outlet. Yes. Can you because explain that's the it like that's pages? Take it back to where it needs to go. So what, what this is doing is we're saying, hey, show out the layout. Mm -hmm. So the layout, don't ignore anything else that is in here. The outlet, or the, the route is saying, show anything in layout. And the layout's like, great, I can show header and I can show footer. What else is supposed to be on this page? Whatever the router picks from the U routes inside of layout. So whichever one of these is right, if it's like, oh, the URL is food page, mm -hmm. what it's going to do is it's going to take the food page element or component and show it in and the outlet. And show it in the outlet. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I got. Okay. That's yes. Okay. I got it. Okay. So now outlet isn't going to show up. What's going to show up is fashion page. Or whichever one of the four pages it is. Correct. The outlet is going to be the source of how it's going to get there. Correct. Got it. And layout is header, page, footer. Yeah. Gotcha. I understand that part. Okay. Ooh, ah. Um. Now, we did this before. And so now that you, 
now that we changed it and we did component, because that's what I was going to ask you about the dot dot, because that was a little bit confusing to me. So now it's coming from app.js, going to the component, and then going to the page. And then that's why we're doing component dot slash component slash the page. Yes. Okay. Let somebody else have a turn, because I need a minute to absorb all of that in my brain. I actually have a question about about that. If if I could just ask before, sure, uh, go for it. The the um, route where you have the routes defined and you have just the just a single slash. Yep. So when you type in slash, and then I forget what all the other routes were, but like favorite slash favorite, it still registers as slash. It's just slash. Yeah, and I'm guessing there's something. Is it going to let me switch back over to? You're saying how does homepage show up without you having to put slash slash? Or or, uh, so that. But even more so, like food page. If you have slash food page, that that doesn't override the original the original the outer slash. <gasps> um apparently not so there so, must be some um something to say deduplicate well i wonder if this works Do apparently that works so what they do is i would have to look at the react router docs to see which one of those is preferred Doug, but apparently if there are so on, on the text, outer on the outer route, which is path equals slash. Oh, sorry, I lagged there for a second. This is the preferred way. Apparently, the preferred way is to not put the slash in and say that because the slash is up here, it will automatically get appended here, here, and here. Mm. Okay, and when you put in slash food page that outer slash that's just slash that it's gets that, that gets treated one. by any path correct why, okay why is that semicolon at the bottom do you know you, you must have it in your food page or in your footer oh right here no it's not that one so it must be in your footer is there supposed to be a slash on lifestyle page as well no no that has to come off Right here. Oh, here. right there. Okay, yeah. So that's why it's there. And then, okay. And then, what was your question, Nicole? Lifestyle. And, uh, oh, yeah, there's lifestyle. still a lash in the lifestyle. Yep, you're right. That shouldn't be there. So because this lash is here, this automatically gets prepended to each one of the paths in here. So that's why you you don't need it there because you're using this outer one here. But if you wanted to have like food page slash, um, you know, Italian, mm -hmm. you would do the slashing. Right, right. Um, so does this mean I understand React? Full mastery. <laughs> no, no, all that. Really? 20,000 hours, 10,000 hours, 20,000 hours, whatever it is. You, you, <laughs> Do you sure? <laughs> like, whew. Mel should get an award. So what you can go back to Mel <laughs> and say is, hey, let's just make sure our version of the act router lines up. And to his defense, the way that you did the layout file in React Router 5 is just completely different than the way you do it in 6. Right. And he and so he, we did like inspect. We did we went here. And so I was freaking out about the yellow stuff. He's like, you don't have to worry about the yellow stuff. But um oh, and so he said I didn't have to worry about the yellow stuff, just the red stuff. So here's another thing. Right here where it says warning, and then it says anchors must have content and the content must be accessible by the screen. Now it's like that's semantic. So you mean I have to up like because it was uh, so these are these are pretty easy to deal with. What it's saying is is in home page because we just moved all all of your code around. Mm -hmm. We go to your home page. They're saying you're importing stuff up here that you're not using. That's what one and two are. 
because so I don't, I don't need to import them. Correct. So you, all you need to do is nuke them, and now that error goes or that warning goes away. Okay. Then you keep going, and it says anchors must have content, and the content must be accessible. So an oh. anchor is right here. It's mad at you because you've got an, an href dot 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 and no text inside this a tag. What should be an a tag, or should the Wherever a tag not the link to? But I don't know that you meant for a link to be in here. I had a ref before I did a back end and a front end. So when I brought this code over, remember I was working on this. But code. what this is like a placeholder. You've got nothing inside this link tag. So nothing showing up. Normally you would say, you know, something like click here to go to Google. And then this would be Google.com. Mm. Now, when you save that, now that goes away because it has an href and it has words inside the A tag. That A tag came from my original idea to where I had the pictures and then you would click on a picture and the picture would take you somewhere. So that I don't necessarily need that because, Correct. okay, so it can be deleted. So now this comes out and then all you need to do is keep going. It's saying layout is using browser router route and routes. Well, of course it is because we moved it over to app. Okay. So if you go to layout, you just need to literally delete everything except outlet that's getting imported from react router gone. And now you're back. Uh... Okay, so is this a cleanup? Yeah. So I'm semantically correct? Oh, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I'll Actually, take this. I'll take Webpack compile successfully then. <laughs> technically being semantically correct would be instead of using a div, you would use something like a, the header tag here. Right. Right, that would be more semantically correct. And then you would keep going and you would say, oh, in my layout, in my footer instead of just calling this. Well, you did, you use the footer tag. So you don't really need this div here because everything's in your footer. Oh, I took that footer from my, um, I took that footer from my portfolio page. Yep. So this footer is what's preferred because that's a semantic tag. So okay. The screen reader goes through, it goes, oh, this is a footer. I probably don't need to read the copyright information and all of that stuff out to the user. Okay. Or if you said, oh, show me like even more semantically correct than header up here would be using, uh, oh, you already are using that. So that's a good semantic step to say, oh, instead of just using another freaking div, I'm going to go use the nav so that when a, this, when a screen reader gets through here, and the user says, please show me the nav, the screen reader can read just that section out. So you see where this says div ID? This was a nav bar that we found in, well, why would they put that there? Why what would they say, what the hell is this? Like, why, what is that about? No idea. This is your code, not mine. Right, but I got that because I took a nav bar from Bootstrap. So this probably isn't doing anything unless in your header.css, you're referencing an ID called what the... I'm oh, not at all. So then that means that in here, if you take this ID out, it's not going to do anything. It's going to still show up the same way. Now you've got a, a bunch of errors in here about, you probably have a bunch of A's in here, but this href doesn't actually go anywhere. Right, because it says that, what is that hoverable about? Like lin3, lin3, I don't, I don't need all of that, do I? No, what, what you need to be probably doing is taking the stuff that does matter in this A tag and using it on this link instead. So the class name? The class name and I don't- But I have a class name of icon link, so I don't need the hoverable. And, and actually, okay, I, okay, I'll work on that. I, I would be very cautious about copying and pasting code unless you know what it's doing. The, the danger here is that if you take your, your capstone and you go, look, it's fully functional, and employer goes, great, tell me what ID Lend4 is doing, you wouldn't be able to say. Right. And I, it, well, there was four words and they were hoverable, but those words are gone. I don't know where they went, but I think they got lost because we did link uh, class name icon travel page. So I think that all those A links can go. Probably. 
Okay. But there is a small chance that that will break the layout of your nav bar. At which point you need to analyze the CSS for a header and figure out what CSS is getting applied. Because right here, actually, I don't yeah. CSS that's targeting that. Actually, this isn't even going to run because you're using SAS inside of CSS file. Right. And so then, so I don't need a nav bar anymore, actually, because I don't need a nav bar because I'm going to have links. I'm going to have product cards. Okay. So I don't need a nav bar. So I could probably take the whole nav bar out. So how are you going to get to the login page for your admin interface so that you can add new products? The nav bar didn't have that. Okay. You could put it in the footer, but that's something to think about is if I have a back end, just like my blog, where I can make a new post, it's not going to be a new post, it's going to be add a new product. How do I get to that page? And you could say, I'm just going to go to slash login. I'm going to type it in, in the URL because I don't want people to be able to get to that page. And that's fine. Or you could say, no, I want a little admin login button in my footer. And when I click on that, that's what takes me to so the my, So the admin, I, th I was thinking about this. So the admin button would just be for me. So I'm right. the admin and then I would do, and then I would do my password and my, my username and my password. And yes. then I would log in. Okay. 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 Oh my God. Oh. All right. I need to do this to relax for a few minutes and rest my nerves. That was a lot. I I I worked with Mel from two to four fifteen. I got dressed, came down here. So I've been coding all day. <laughs> and and so off. I code for eleven hours a day. <laughs> you get paid. I'm just trying to get through to survive. <laughs> oh my God. Mel was, but, but I, I really, I really appreciate Mel because he's like, when you finish the boot camp, you will be employable. He said, he said, you don't have to be like worried about like having to be so, you know, thinking you got to have this, 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 and this. He's like, you'll be employable. I was like, okay. Well, and, and a good, what I remind people a lot is a good develop, like any good employer who is hiring, hiring a junior developer understands that a junior developer cannot take a task and finish it from start to finish unless that task is very specific to a junior developer. Right. So I give my senior, I give my junior developers senior level tasks all the time. I don't expect them to be able to complete them. I expect them to come back to me and say, here's what I got done. Here's the part that I need help with. Okay. That is what it, or I would give my junior developer a task and I said, I would say, hey, this is a small enough task for something that you have enough expertise on that I think yeah. you'll be able to pull this off on your own. But I don't, I don't expect, a, and, and I wrote, I just wrote a blog post on that. If you're curious about the, the job breakdown, I wrote a whole post on where I'll, I'll share the link to you. Um, so for our portfolio page, should we go as far as to add JavaScript and React mm -hmm. or React on the portfolio side? Mm -hmm. So just front end, not back end. No, you can add back end. But what, what, what will be, would front end be enough? It depends what job you're applying for. Yeah, there are certainly front end developer jobs. Um, there are certainly front-end developer jobs that um, that's a, a perfect starting point. Some companies will say, hey, we start everyone off at, at someone who doesn't have a ton of experience, we start everyone off at front-end. And if you can prove to us that you do front-end well, we'll, maybe there's an opportunity for back-end that opens up and you move over there. Maybe an opportunity for full stack opens up and you can go do that. Um, our company tends to only hire full stack devs because we want someone that we can throw a feature at and they don't have to go, oh, I don't know the database, so I can't do that. I don't know anything in the back end, so I can't do that. We hire full stack, even if you don't have a ton of experience, we want you to work your way to full stack so that when we hand you a feature, you can finish it from start to finish. Some companies are not set up like that. Some companies will say, no, you build out the front end 
and you hand it to the backend developers and they build an API and hand it to the database people and they update the database and then they hand it to DevOps and DevOps, DevOps ships it off. Okay. Or they'll say, hey, our senior dev just wrote this in the backend. Here's the API spec. Go integrate that into your front end. Right. So at that point, you're like, all right, I was told this is what's coming back from the fetch. So I need to go make the fetch work and make that data show up. It totally depends on the company and it depends on the job title. So you may find that, you know, oh, it turns out database is my stuff. And even though I just spent only two weeks learning databases, I want to go be writing SQL code and like that's what's fun to me. You could go apply to be a, a junior front end database engineer and you could not touch any JavaScript ever again. Right? Like it totally depends on the job title. Um, and as Larry is finding, right, it's not just about the language, it's about, or it's not just about the skill set, it's also about the language. So an employer goes, oh, we use Ruby on Rails, but I'm sure Larry is already finding, oh, Ruby on Rails has an ORM built in, the ORM that we learned was SQLized. So a lot of those concepts overlap, or, oh, the front end is still coming back, but no matter what, what you're using, if you're building something for the web, there's some level of HTML. So that, that level of, oh, the, the language may not be exactly the same, but the concepts are. And so being able to take those concepts and apply it elsewhere. Okay. Yeah, and, and, and now, I probably could explain this. If I had to, if somebody asked me, I think I, I explained some of it to you, so. Uh, I may be able to speak to this at some point. Well, um, okay. Any other questions while Christy reboots her brain? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Ooh. So this is what we're gonna do all this week? This is what we're going to do for at least Monday. Okay. I mean, I plan all the way through to the end of the curriculum and have every day planned out thoroughly. Okay, so before you order this, let's figure out if it works. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm not, this is not. Any other questions from the remote crowd before I end the uh, recording? Uh, yeah, can I ask one more question about the route paths? Yep. Starting with the route. So, if uh, if the route that is the the root route, the just the slash, is not um, around the other routes, if we just have two routes next to each other, slash and slash login, mm -hmm. slash login will not also trigger slash. Slash only gets triggered when it's just the root. Right. Or okay. there is another. Um, prop that you can put on that route to say it will also work for, I think, the 404 page. I think I understand reality. But other than that, you are correct. It will only trigger when there is nothing else after that slash. I understand JavaScript, but I okay. <laughs> but when it's when there are other routes nested inside of that route, it will combine the slash at the top with the slash in the path in the nested routes, okay. put those two, two together, uh, realize that it's a match and show that element. Okay, thank you. So it's not necessarily that there are just routes inside of it, it's that it's concatenating the path and realizing that together those two paths are a match. Okay, I think that makes sense. Thank you. Zach, any follow-up questions before we uh, end the recording? Yeah, 12,760 items. Uh, I'm good on my end. Thank you. Cool. I will let you guys go. Have an awesome evening. Have a good night. Good night, everyone. All right. Everybody. Bye.